teams just had no idea how to stop him. Andrea Perla on teammate Kaká's ability. Kaká was a World Cup winner, a Ballon d'Or winner, and a Champions League winner by the age of 25. He was the best player in the world in a period lived in by Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. He was much sought after amongst Europe in the six years that he had played at the San Siro, and despite claims that he wished to grow old at Milan, Manchester City lodged a bid of £100 million for the Brazilian. With finances at the front of their mind, Milan accepted the bid, allowing Kaká to talk to the newly ambitious side from East Manchester. He rejected the chance to play in the Premier League and instead signed for Real Madrid six months later. Paired with world record signing and fellow Ballon d'Or podium achiever Cristiano Ronaldo, a second wave of the Galacticos were forming at the Bernabeu. However, his four years at Real Madrid were blighted by injury and after scoring just 29 goals, returned to Milan for a season. In 2014, Kaká would have a stint back at his first club, Sao Paulo, before closing out a storied career at new MLS side, Orlando City. It was a career that shone brightest but quickest out of his closest peers. But let's slide the doors open, gauge the effect of the butterfly and rewrite the football in history books. Here's what would have happened if... Kaká signed for Manchester City in 2009. After a period of negotiations, Manchester City lured Kaká to England with a hefty contract offer in a world record transfer fee record shattering £100 million. He made his debut on January the 31st, coming off the bench at the Britannia Stadium against Stoke City, assisting Rubinho and Craig Bellamy in a 2-1 win. He could do it on a cold Sunday in Stoke after all. Manchester City's woeful away form transformed in the second half of the season, with pivotal wins away at Portsmouth, West Ham and Tottenham, propelling City into the reckoning for the first Europa League campaign. A win over Bolton on the final day confirmed 7th place ahead of Fulham. They would make the final four of the UEFA Cup, losing on penalties to Werder Bremen in the semi-final. Kaká's old club AC Milan finished third in the league, level on 68 points with Fiorentina and Genoa as they squeezed in the Champions League for the 2009-10 season. Joining them at Europe's top table as ever would be Real Madrid, suddenly painted as favourites, with the signings of Cristiano Ronaldo, David Villa and Cesc Fabregas in a treble swoop costing over €170 million. Euros. Thanks to these signings, Manuel Pellegrini guided Real Madrid to a Champions League final, where they were handsomely beaten by Jose Mourinho's Inter Milan and two Diego Milito goals. Pellegrini put Real Madrid's name back on top of La Liga, a 2-2 draw at home to Barcelona in April, crucial to pipping the Catalan rivals to the title by a point. Meanwhile, Kaká found his feet in Manchester and outscored both Steven Gerrard and Frank Lampard in his first full season. The Brazilian netted 23 goals as City claimed the final Champions League spot in a penultimate day win over Tottenham at the Etihad Stadium. By this stage, City had also confirmed a place in the Europa League final against Atletico Madrid and won their first piece of silverware since 1976. An aggregate win in the semi-finals over Manchester United after extra time followed by a 3-0 win at Wembley over Aston Villa claimed Manchester City the League Cup. Kaká scored two in the final. The Brazilian playmaker notched 11 goals in the Europa League campaign which saw City house Shakhtar Donetsk, Juventus and Wolfsburg before a penalty shootout win in Hamburg over Atletico in the final. City would take another piece of silverware the following year, the FA Cup in a 4-0 thrashing of Stoke City in the final. The Premier League still eluded City, but by just a point from Manchester United as the two Manchester clubs went to the final day. Successive away day losses to Chelsea and Liverpool in March and April depleted City's 5 point lead over their rivals. Kaká put another 17 in the net in the league and 7 in the Champions League where they were eliminated by Manuel Pellegrini's Real Madrid in the quarterfinals. The Real Madrid hierarchy, still impressed with Pellegrini's unseating of Barcelona the previous season, would be barred from trophies in the 2010-11 season on all three fronts by Barcelona. They triumphed in La Liga by 7 points, beat Real in the final of the Copa del Rey and the semi-finals of the Champions League. And in the final Pep Guardiola's Barcelona, would meet Jose Mourinho's Inter Milan after they had eked out a 1-0 aggregate win in the semi-finals over Manchester United. The Champions League would be the third step in an unprecedented second treble in a row for Inter Milan. Barcelona were after a second treble of their own and after goals from Lionel Messi and Pedro, they ran out 2-1 winners at Wembley. Real Madrid would return to contention with the acquisition of Carlo Ancelotti in 2011, shortly after his firing from Chelsea. Ancelotti steered them to another La Liga title in 2012, but ultimately they came up short in search for a La Decima again. That honour was bestowed on Manchester City for eliminating Real Madrid at the semi-final stage where Kaká scored three of City's four goals over the two legs in a 4-2 aggregate win. A penalty shootout defeat to Chelsea in the final called time on Roberto Mancini in Manchester, sacked by the impatient board after the defeat. 
City had beaten Mourinho's Inter in the previous round, as Inter Milan's powers waned. They fell behind Juventus in Serie A by 7 points, a move that signalled the end of Mourinho in Milan. He resigned at the end of the season. Mourinho would return to England in 2012. He joined the English champions, signing Eden Hazard immediately. The champions, Manchester City, who blew United out of the water by 8 points. Sir Alex Ferguson would have revenge in his final year, claiming back the Premier League title, his 13th by just 2 points. Manchester City and Jose Mourinho had bigger fish to fry, however. Those fish were Bayern Munich and Wembley in the Champions League final, a ground where two weeks previously they had run out 5-0 winners against the already relegated Wigan Athletic in the FA Cup final. City had beaten Shakhtar and Malaga in the knockouts before finally being tested by Ancelotti's Real Madrid in the semi-finals. City, just like the previous year, had Real's number. The potency of Kaká, Hazard and Aguero up front was a wet dream for the City fans. They burst into a 2-0 lead early on at Wembley against Bayern through Kaká and Aguero and despite a cagey final 15 minutes triumph 2-1. After a period on the sidelines late on in 2013, Kaká opted to return to AC Milan for the second half of the season. City claimed another league title but Mourinho ultimately couldn't lead them to another Champions League, bowing out after a final defeat to Atletico Madrid in Lisbon. Let's take it to the winners and losers. Manchester City, winners, because they got the elusive Champions League win that has overshadowed any success they have achieved in the last decade. Kaká, winner, because that second Champions League title that evaded him at the Bernabeu was claimed at the Etihad Stadium. Arsenal, losers, because their spell on the sidelines of Europe's top table was enacted sooner with Cesc Fabregas' departure to Barcelona in 2009. Atletico Madrid, winners, because the much sought after Champions League pinnacle was finally reached in 2014. Bayern Munich, losers, because they didn't claim their most recent Champions League triumph in 2013 and didn't even make the final in their home stadium in 2012 thanks to Kaká and Manchester City, nor the final in 2010 thanks to Real Madrid. Their wait for a Champions League final now extends from 2001. Wigan Athletic and Dave Whelan, losers. Because even Dave Whelan couldn't wheel his team over the line against a barbaric city side. Is this the alternative universe you expected? Please let us know in the comments section if you have any suggestions for a future scenario. Thanks for watching and don't forget to smash a like on the video and subscribe to What If Football for more alternate football universes.